Welcome to Strength Chat Podcast, presented by Kabuki Strength. Introducing your hosts, Chris Duffin, the mad scientist of strength, Rudy Kadlov, mature athlete and coach, and the wizard of training himself, Brandon Sen. Welcome to Strength Chat with your host, the mad scientist of strength. That's right, Chris Duffin, myself. To my right, we have our mature athlete and coach. Are you, you rolling... You've heard that how many how many times have you heard that, Rudy? And it's it's it gets, and you got to roll it gets your eyes. Better it, it, every time. I know it gets better. It gets better every time. Every time. Uh, our mature athlete and coach, Dr. Rudolph, and to my left, yes, one, the only, the wizard of training, Brandon Sin. Unfortunately, he doesn't train anymore, but we'll get to that in a minute. I can't train. <laughs> you broke his toy. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. It's been an interesting week here at the lab. We're uh, setting up our new manufacturing facility, so we've been uh, quite busy with uh, moving equipment and forklifts running around and electricians and, and the like, which I don't think anybody's ever heard it on the podcast in the past, but uh, during the course of it, sometimes there's some sound going on in the wall directly behind us because some of our manufacturing takes place literally five feet away from us, Brandon. Is that right? My math? Yeah, right? five feet. About five feet. Yeah. When, well, wait, what when would be cool if you see a, a chainsaw coming through that back wall? That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. There's literally, there's literally, there's literally <laughs> Holy shit. As, shoulder rocks. start to a horror right movie. To but uh, in the process, Brandon had to give up on his training. Not because of the move. But we decided to performance test some bars and... Um, Including his favorite. Including one of his favorite bars by a competitor. By a competitor? We don't have a bar line yet. We don't have one yet. <laughs> shush. <laughs> shush. <laughs> Correct. It is not for sale yet. Uh, and I might I might have bent Brandon's favorite bar last night. I think you just bent it just to bend it. I would never <laughs> no, he did, He didn't bend it just to bend it. He just bent it to piss you off. Yeah, he bent it just so we couldn't use it anymore. Would, he wants I to would, convert us. I would not do that. Like the other bars I threw in the trailer uh-huh. <laughs> to hide from people. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get to the podcast. Today, we're very excited to have on T- Tony Gentlecore. So, Tony, if you don't know who he is, is a uh, prolific uh, author. He's got a tremendous blog, uh, writes for all sorts of publications. Um, I'd say probably no, most notably uh, a lot of work for uh, T Nation, Bodybuilding.com, Men's Health, um, so tons of great content that go out. He cr- creates content on uh, video content as well. And he's the owner of, uh, is it Core Performance? Is that? Uh, what, Just Core. The, core? the gym's okay. called Core. It's uh, 800 square feet, Chris. It's, is not, it, a, it's not a warehouse. Is, okay. it, <laughs> is, is Core an acronym for anything, or does it represent no, the killer uh, abs you have? I, I was going to name my, my – it, it came down to two names when I, when I left Cressy Sports Performance. I was like – and I decided I was going to open up a gym. It was either going to be Core or Badass Diesel Motherfucker Club. But <laughs> wow. the Core, you know, I, I wouldn't have gotten the latter uh, accepted by the community. Yeah, that would have been hard to get the sign in for that I, one. I, I but, don't know. Uh, <laughs> it might have, might have worked out pretty – nobody's ever tried that one. So I, No, but, uh, but you, I figured Core was like – it kind of insinuates my last name, right? But it does, not and, and people kind of know what the core what core is. So um, it, it just kind of vomits fitness. So if it I vom- ran with it. If it vomits fitness, you can't really go too wrong, right? So, <laughs> no. so Tony out of uh, Core does uh, personal training and nope. also has uh, online training and participates uh, in doing a number of seminars himself or collaborating with other folks, such as <laughs> recently. Uh, the, I always get the, which, which is wrong. The complete, uh, is I get it hip, mixed up. Hip, the complete uh, shoulder and complete hip. Shoulder and hip. Shoulder yeah. comes before hip. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> complete shoulder and hip blueprint. Why is that? You wrote yeah. the title. <laughs> I think, uh, I think we did it because I typically do day one, which is shoulders. So, and Dean does day two, which is hips. So, you know, alphabetically it would have made more sense, but we ran with shoulder and hip. So that's, that's what we, that's what we named it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, you're, you're you're in the front, so that's all that matters, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, Rudy and I recently attended that. Uh, I guess it was uh, two months ago. Gosh, now. Yeah, back so, in yeah. February, I think. So, had yep. a had a great time working together uh, over the course of that weekend and uh, getting to know each other. But uh, as uh, Tony just alluded to, he is formerly of. Well, I, I like the name that you have. I mean, Cressel Cressel Sports <laughs> Performance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, home of. <laughs> 
wizardry and sports. I mean, like, uh, excuse at, me, this is the yeah. home of wiz- wizardry. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, Eric won out on that one and calling it Krusty Sports Performance. My name didn't. My name didn't fly. What I proposed, so <laughs> we, went, we went with Krusty Sports Performance. Well, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and despite despite his uh, cat loving, we have decided to have Tony on our podcast today. Yes, so. yes. Uh, that, that that weirdly, that's always becomes a topic when Dean and I speak together, as you guys as we uh, saw yes. yourself. Yeah. Despite the cats and the and the Star Wars passion. <clears throat> yes, yeah. despite that, yeah. So it, it becomes cats and Star Wars. See, and that, lifting heavy stuff. I yeah. don't want people to get the wrong <laughs> yep, yep. impression. Yeah, right. We'll see. <laughs> That's why you need to pick up a, uh, a shoulder rock so you can work on strengthening your lightsaber <laughs> skills, right? So and getting stronger <laughs> at the same <laughs> time. Hell, is his lightsaber yeah. weighs, his lightsaber weighs 150 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you know, one of the things we're really interested in is is actually just that. Uh, you know, not necessarily the leaving of Cressy, but like the business that you have now and yeah. how you decided to go about it, what you've learned. Um, and you know, it's, you've got a successful pers- business that is both, uh, online in person. Um, you know, you've got, uh, seminar products as well. Like, but you're essentially, if I, if I get it wrong, you're, you're a one man show, right? You're, I am. Yeah. It, it's, it's, one man. It, it's Tony. <laughs> so, one. so, one man. So, like, uh, one man and how many cats still? Just one. Just one. Okay. I don't, yeah, just one. <laughs> I, like, I, I, it would be funny if I had like three of them behind me. Like, yeah, it would. And, yeah. <laughs> crawling on your shoulders. We, we, we've done a few podcasts where there's like dogs running and pouncing around and, you know, I think attacking our, uh, our you know, our the person we're talking to uh-huh. at the same time. So, you, you might get a baby crying. So, if that happens, forgive me. But it oh, might, it congratulations on that. Thank yeah. You. yeah, yeah, thank you. Four months. Good, Whew. yeah. <laughs> That's still the easy phase, so. <laughs> it is, actually, yeah. Well, the first six weeks were hard. Um, it's getting a bit easier, and then I know it's going to become, when it becomes mobile, it's going to be a different story. That, that's when, when it I, becomes so, mobile. So like, <laughs> it? Yeah. it? So, no, so is, it a, it. is it a he or a she? <laughs> It's a, it's a he. Okay. <laughs> when, when he gets mobile, you, you didn't say it. When, when it becomes gets mobile, mobile. <laughs> you'll you'll have to make you'll have to make sure this stays <laughs> off of the wife's podcast <laughs> listening okay. list. Okay. It? What do you mean? It? <laughs> <laughs> Won't be able to live it down. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Let's let let's talk about. Uh, the Tony me. show. Let's like, talk about yeah. me. Let's it's talk about, about the Tony me. show. Let's talk about me right now. <laughs> Enough uh, about me. Let's talk about me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> how, how did you decide to make that launch? How has it worked out for you? What are some of the things that uh, uh, that uh, you, you've learned in the process? Yeah. So it's, it's about a year and a half that I left Krusty Sports Performance. And thankfully, I can still pay my bills. So it's, it's working out in that effect. So <laughs> yay me. Um, I don't, you know, before I did it, so we're talking, this is the fall of 2015. Um, it was kind of loosely in my head for maybe a year, uh, very loosely. Like, I, I wasn't in a rush to leave. Believe me, I was very happy there. Um, but then my, my wife and I got married, um, decided, you know, kind of talking things through, like, okay, what's our... I'm not, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not a, a two-year plan or a five-year plan guy, Um I tend not to think that far ahead. I just like it's lucky I look, I, that I look a week ahead in my life. Like, oh, what am I going to be doing in a week? Um, but you know, she and I were talking, and I it just came to the point where it was time to turn the page. Um, there was nothing nefarious. Like people, when it first happened, thought that Eric and I had a falling out, and there was some, like some kind of knife fight or you know <laughs> something weird happened. And nothing weird happened. It was just it was just time to go. Um, I was there for eight years, right from the get go. And um, an opportunity fell on my lap here in Boston where I could have, um, I was subleasing underneath somebody else. I, I didn't initially leave to open up the gym. Like that, that, that was not my plan. I, I um, far thinking I'm a, a, a good businessman in that sense. I was like, no way, I'm not, I'm, I, don't, I'm, I want no part in gym ownership. I, you know, even my role at Cresty Sports Performance was more so as coach rather than it was business owner. So um, that's where my strengths are, which is being on the floor coaching people. It wasn't trying to get people into the gym and selling them packages. It's like I'd rather just be on the floor and coach people. That's my strength. Um, 
but yeah, I left and uh, I was subleasing underneath another woman who had a space available, like a mile from my apartment. So I went from a 45 minute commute both ways to a mile, which was lovely. <laughs> I did the math. I was spending about, geez, seven hours a week in my car, um, which was a good opportunity to listen to books and podcasts and I was used to it, so I made good use of that time. But when you do the math and really think about it, you're like, holy shit, I spent a lot of time in my car. <laughs> and, uh, a lot. So yeah. what's that? What's that, Rudy? That's a lot of time. It's, uh, yeah, but it, you know, like I said, it was, I got, I, I probably listened to about a book a week in my car, which was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I, you know, subleasing, and then the woman who, and now that um, you're a mile mile away, you're illiterate. Is that it? You just now, I, <laughs> now I never read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's trade offs. It's all downhill now. So actually, you come to think of it, it there is that that almost not that I don't read. I still do, but nearly not as much. Yeah. Like it actually was a good opportunity to get, to listen to books that I normally wouldn't read, um, and podcasts. But when I walk to work, I listen to podcasts. So. Uh, that, that gives me, it's about a 20 minute walk. So that gives me an opportunity to, to listen to some good stuff. But, um, so anyways, like, yeah, I was subleasing on her. She, she had, um, she trained a lot of, or worked a lot of endurance athletes, which I had, that wasn't really my cup of tea and she had very lim- limited equipment there. So she allowed me to bring in some equipment. So I got a, a power rack and some kettlebells and some power blocks and some barbells. And then, Fast forward six months, she ended up not renewing her lease, and then I took it over, and that's when I named it Core, and um, kind of gave it a little bit of a facelift, made it look a little bit more me, uh, as far as the ambiance and. Um, so and when more- I say that, it's not like I'm saying like, yeah, I shot a in the background and candles and, and stuff like that. <laughs> it was just, you know, a fresh coat of paint, uh, got some more equipment, and. Um, you know, thankfully, what, what's been great is that because of my reputation prior to leaving Cressy Sports Performance and kind of building a brand within a brand, it kind of people come to me organically. Like my my website feeds me clients. You know, people read my stuff. They find out I'm in Boston, so that you know, living in a big city doesn't doesn't hurt. So um, it's, it's, it's I don't have to do a ton of quote unquote marketing because I I hate doing that and I hate being I hate doing that stuff. So I just, I just kind of run around where I figure if I put out good content and I put out enough of it, which I, th- I think I have, um, people are going to gravitate to it and, and you, seek me out. And then you, you the talk coaching about, will speak for itself. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. And so you talk about, uh, you know, not wanting to be into marketing, but, you know, I think one of the things that you've done really well that does market is that your, your authentic self, you know, like yeah, yeah. Your, your quirkiness comes across in your writing, like the, you know, all of that. And, uh, you know, I think people get a, a really good experience that you're passionate about what that, you're doing and sharing valid. knowledge. So I, you know, it's, it's yeah. not purposeful marketing, but it's, you know, being yourself is a, is a useful, useful tool. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you go to Tony I mean, it's a pretty good marketing tool. You did a good yeah, job with thank that. You. Good job. Ironically, I, I, I had a client start about uh, five weeks ago. Um, who's a, a pretty, um, uh, pr- or a prominent businessman here in Boston. And I, I, he was amongst other clients of mine who had been with me for a while and my blog came up and he's like, wait, you got a blog, you got a website. And like my other clients are like, how is it, how do you not know this? And it's, it's like, I don't like, I don't <laughs> like, when I, even when I'm with clients, it's not like I'm talking about me. I'm like, I'm not like, Hey, go to my website, you know, but, um, but no, thank you. That that's very kind of you to guys say, to say that about my content. I, I do think I am pretty authentic. Like how I write is how I speak uh, and how I speak is how I write, how, however way we want to put that. So, um, yeah, thank you. So we have, we have a lot of listeners that uh, are uh, aspiring to be, you know, have their own business, and uh, you've set out about doing it yourself. Uh, tell us, you know, the the top five scariest things and the f- top Ooh. five best things that you did, or maybe three, <laughs> so we yeah. didn't get too far. I, I could probably, yeah, I could. I think, you know, what what helped uh, give me comfort when I knew I was going to leave Cressy Sports Performance, you got I'm, you guys may or may not be familiar with him, but Todd Bumgarner. Um, yep. I, th- I think you guys know who he is. Uh, he was in Boston for a, a workshop he was doing at one of the Equinox gyms here, and he stayed with me that weekend. And we were up a little late talking, and I kind of like broached the topic with him, and he was like, "Dude, um, whatever you do, if you're going to do it, you got to scare the shit out of yourself." 
Like that's the only way you're going to actually do something is if you scare the living shit out of yourself. And that, that, however many words that was, that was, it really resonated with me. And I was like, you know what? He's kind of right. Like it, it, it was, I was very comfortable where I was. Um, certainly being at a, a part of an institution like Cresty Sports Performance doesn't suck. Um, it's a, it's a well-known facility and a lot of great coaches and, um, uh, you know, it was very intimidating to, to leave that comfort zone, so to speak. Um, but I think just the initial step was, was, uh, the hardest thing out of the get-go, Rudy. It was, you know, having, um, the confidence to actually do it, uh, and the balls to do it, so to speak. Um, you know, thankfully, you know, I have a very, uh, understanding wife who's always behind my, my back on that stuff. So she was, she was right there with me saying, yeah, do it. I'm here. I'm here to support you. So that was, uh, um, obstacle number one <laughs> would be just the initial like step off the edge. Sure, yeah, um, take that first step. And you know, I feel like what made it what made it a little bit more palatable was I knew I was stepping into a situation that was pretty small. Like I wasn't I wasn't like I'm going to open up this ten thousand square foot facility with beautiful equipment and and and, the, and I'm just going to turn the lights on and people are going to show up because that isn't how it works. <laughs> like. Um, it is not how it works. I mean, I can't tell you how it, many it people, is not. <laughs> it, no, it's not. And Pete Dupuy at, at Cresty would tell you that he's the guy that does all the most of the bit, all the business consultations. And time after time after time after time, he can't he he could tell you horror story after horror story of people that have that mentality. And I don't think it's ever worked, <laughs> to be honest. You know, start small and build big. I mean, that's that's what we did with CSP. That's what I hope I'm doing correctly now. Um, Cause, and, and, you know, and, but, you know, as far as other mistakes I feel I've made, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's been too many just because I feel like I, I had a, a good internship with, for eight years, watching Pete and Eric do the business side of things and starting small and, um, not making, making, I mean, hell, like I bought used equipment. Like I, I wasn't buying brand spanking new equipment. Like I, I, I went on Craigslist and found Texas power bars that, that were like half off that were barely used and, you know, misplate mismatched plates. And I mean, I don't care. I just want, I, I've, got a, I, I've got a bar I can sell you, by the way, <laughs> uh, not slightly, it's bar. slightly bent. It, 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 well, I, I, they're, they're it's, lightly it's, used bars it's, that, that it's I bought some, that were, got some wear. We'll just put yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> well, Imperfection. We buy used equipment, but now we just make our own bars. So I don't know if that's moving ahead or moving back. <laughs> Yeah, if I, I mean, if I, uh, well, you know, speaking of bars, like certainly yours is in heavy rotation, Chris, the the <laughs> Duffalo bar that that I that I got at my facility. So um, that is a brand speaking new bar that I got. But nice. um, yeah, I was I was looking so. to see that on uh, Tony's favorite things. I didn't see that yeah. though. It, it's on there. It's on there. Okay. It's in heavy rotation. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I think. Uh, mistakes. I mean, certainly I could, I'm not a very good, uh, um, I'm very disorganized, not very disorganized, but systems are kind of like my, my downfall, like having, you know, tallying sessions and who owes what, what program, who needs a program when, um, eventually I, I, I solved that riddle with getting a, a virtual assistant. So, you know, a little trade barding where I write her programs and she kind of takes care of my scheduling for me and tells me, you know, who has, who has sessions left, who needs a program. So that, that worked out well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, I can't think of too many huge mistakes I made cause I, I was pretty good with the lease negotiation. Um, you know, Pete made sure to, you know, he looked everything over for me and, um, you know, getting my, you know, accountant in the mix and financial advisor and all that stuff. So, um, not to say that I'm perfect. I'm, I'm well, certainly well, not, let's but. say in in, in <laughs> retrospect, looking back of of the you know the number of talents that you have and skill sets, uh, which ones do you think you leaned on the most or served you uh, the best in starting your own business? Um, you know, I really do think part of being successful is what Cr- what Chris brought up earlier is being authentic. So I think you know there are plenty of people that a handful of people that came in who had no idea who I was. Like, certainly I, I, I was able to uh, generate a lot of people who read my stuff before, so they kind of knew what they're getting themselves into when they walked in the doors as far as, like, 
what they're going to be doing. They knew they're going to be deadlifting, squatting. You know, there wasn't going to be any like yoga lattes or anything like that. But um, certainly I've had quite a few people who have come in who have no idea who I was. They just think I'm some regular Joe Schmo personal trainer, um, you know, like this, like any other personal trainer. So uh, and I think once they realize that um, my authenticity and my coaching skills um, kind of showcase them like they they kind of they 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 get that so um yeah the short answer is just authenticity like not being and not being douchey and just pushing people like i like i i don't have people buy packages for as an example like i'd rather earn their business month by month than saying okay uh we just did your assessment so i'm gonna here here's what it would cost to buy 24 sessions with me um and then they look at the number and they're like holy shit like that's a lot of money um, I'd rather not do that. I'd rather say, Hey, here's what it costs to, to train with me for a month. The, the amount of times you want to come in. Um, and then each month I'm going to earn your business. You know, we're, we're going to re up month by month rather than saying, Hey, pay me, pay me this huge lump sum of money right up front. I, I just don't feel like that works well. Um, even in a, even in big commercial gyms, I don't yeah, feel like that. It doesn't set a good well. tone. No. Yeah, not at all. So, um, you know, I, that, yeah, that, that, this, that's the kind of stuff I feel like if I had to say it separates me from the, from the masses, it'd be just little stuff like that. So you'd rather, you know, train and deliver results than be a salesperson. Exactly. Is what you're saying. It's weird. How, it's weird yeah. how that works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So interesting, rather, you know, like, interesting model. And, like, <laughs> rather like be a good coach and show people how to do shit and um, get them to feel better and get stronger. And then like, yes, deliver results. It's, you know, it's speaking really to the commercial setting, a lot of young aspiring fitness pros or coaches go into that 24 hour fitness, LA fitness. You know, yep. I was one of them and they don't really know what they're getting, getting themselves into in terms of, you know, all right, you're a fitness guy, but you're also like, you need to sell this many per month, you know? Yep. So that is a, I, in my experience in talking with younger aspiring fitness pros, that's one of the biggest things that they learned early on. We got a question from uh, a post we made about, you know, what should we ask you? And uh, one of them was, what was the biggest lessons you learned in your first initial run in the fitness industry? Whether it was your, you know, if it was that first internship with Cressy uh, yep. or even before that. So entering into the market, what was the what was the biggest lessons you learned? Well, well, that, you know, not to age myself, but back in 2002, when I entered the fitness industry. Wow, uh, that's really yeah. old. Well, it's, it's, I know it's relative. I know it's relative. Let's put it in perspective here, Tony. <laughs> um, I, I, first off, I'll preface all of this by saying I think it behooves any fitness, incoming fitness professional to work in a commercial gym for a couple years. I, I would advocate highly that they do that. I think that's the only way you're going to get better. I think that's the only way you're going to have access to so many different people and uh, eclectic backgrounds and goals and injury histories and personalities like – um, I, I really, it really bothers me when, when people say, oh, I don't, I don't want to work in a commercial gym. Like they're above it. And I just want to be like, screw you. Like that, everyone has to start somewhere. Um, right. and I did it for five years. Eric did it for five years. Like there's a lot of, you know, well-known coaches who had their roots in commercial gyms. And there's a lot of well-known coaches who are still in commercial gym settings. Um, you know, Dean, D- Dean's Dean one, one yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Dean, Dean does very well and is very happy and, you know, he made himself indispensable to the company, you know, which a lot, which gave him a little bit of leverage to, you know, to get a higher percentage of, of his training and, and do, and, and to be able to travel and do all that stuff. So, um, you know, you make, you make what you want of it as far as, you know, that, that commercial gym setting, but, um, you know, as far as the mistake and stuff I learned my, um, coming into it initially, uh, I didn't know shit. Um, I, I, no, I think out of school, I think everyone thinks, oh, I took all my, my, my prerequisite classes and, uh, I know what I'm doing. I, I have a six pack and, uh, I, I can train anyone. And my first client, I remember distinctly, like, I was like, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, uh, um, and I think having, having a sense of humility, um, in the industry is important, you know, and that should be, that should be longstanding. Like, I think. Uh, I look at guys like Dan John and Mike Boyle, um, you know, all these quote unquote older coaches who have been who have been coaching for 20, 25, 30 plus years who still can say like, yeah, I was wrong on that or I'm still learning or I changed my mind on this. 
Um, and I and I see a lot of trainers who are in year one, year two, who feel like they know it all um, and like very stubborn. Uh, like everyone has to squat the same way and deadlift the same way. And no, oh, this is wrong and that's right. And there, there, it's, it's, it's not the way it should be. Um, so I think just having that humility in the, in the start and then just having it long throughout your whole career, I think, um, would be a smart approach for pretty much anyone. Yeah. It, it sounds like when the overarching concept there is to kind of put the time in and, you know, exactly. just do it. You know, that's, that's something that, especially in this day and age, it's, it's very common, uh, for individuals to go straight to social media and say, Hey, time, uh, I'm offering coaching services now, sign up. What do you think, yeah. uh, you know, so if we put those two individuals in, in a separate box, if we say the people who go straight to the social side versus the people who go more the in-person route, do you think there's lessons to be learned on either side or would you push everyone to get in and get some hands-on coaching experience before that? You know what? I think any, and I'll say this in quotations too, any good online coach and the good is in quotations would, would, will almost always say that their services is second to in-person training. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've said that all the time. I get people, I do distance coaching. Like I did it, you know, I, my first distance coaching client was back in 2006, you know, back at a point where no one did that. I had no idea what the hell that was. I had, I had a client who was with me in Syracuse and when I moved to Connecticut with Eric, uh, he was like, hey, I still want to do, I still want you to be my coach. So how can we do that? And I was like, I don't know. I guess I can just send you an Excel spreadsheet and you can pay me. Like, right. <laughs> you know, like it was. That's, so you're telling me that you started this whole online coaching thing. I, I invented the internet <laughs> and I invented that. Yeah, no. <laughs> but uh, um, I, I think any, like I said, I think any good uh, uh, online coach would say that their service is second to sending someone to go get in-person coaching. Um, that, I mean, of course systems come into play here, but I, I've had numerous times I've had people reach out to me from across the country and across the world. Like, Hey, I love you to be my coach. They give me their background and I kind of get a flavor for like, they're pretty, they're pretty new. They, they don't, they don't need something advanced for me to write and, you know, I know they could they could spend the tenth amount of money and go get that book, or they can go get coaching with a with a person or a trainer in, in person. They're going to get way more benefit out of that than me than than working with me. Um, and I I've, I always say that. Um, I think, yeah, I just think any any good online coach would say that. However, um, I will say also the good ones tend to start with actually coaching people in real life. Yeah, because because there's there's so many nuances with training people um, and, and you need to be able to correct the squat in person <laughs> or correct deadlift technique in person. If you have any chance of looking at somebody on video and to be able to correct it there. So much more uh, challenging. That, that's such a true statement. Yeah. yeah. It's so it, and, and people think there's this notion that that online training is easier and less time intensive. And no. I would say it's the complete it's more, opposite. It's yeah. more. Yeah. It's, it's way more work. Yeah. Like way more work. Um, I mean, yeah, there are some people out there who do very well, who have hundreds of online clients, but they've also been doing it for several years and they have systems and they have other people doing their work for them. But that's, that's, you know, if you're a one man show like myself, like I limit myself to uh, maybe 10, on, 10 to 15 online clients at any given time because I don't want to dilute the product. Right. Anything more than that and my time, it just becomes a cluster and I'm like, and I just feel like it dilutes the product. Like I can't give them my full undivided attention. I can't write good programs because I also have to write programs and coach my my in-person clients on top of all the time it takes to answer emails and watch video, tweak programs, answer questions, you know, film videos to send them. Um, it, it just it's very time intensive. I don't know where this notion that it's it's easy and you know you're just gonna be working four hours a week comes from when, with distance coaching because that's I, that's not that hasn't been my experience. I, I think um, the I think the good coaches know that it takes more time, and the in the you know the whole other group are just sending out here's here's the training plan I follow. Go ahead and go do it. Yeah, you know, and, much. and I think that's, that, where that's the, not co- but that's not coaching. No, <laughs> no, no. I think and, and if you're gonna do if you're gonna do distance coaching right, I feel there has to be a um, part of the service should be you know, watching, observing videos, providing feedback, you know, tweaking the program as they go. Um, you know, guys like Pat Davidson and Greg Robbins, like they use rated perceived exertion. So like if they're, if you're like, Greg is my coach, 
um, and he writes my programs just in stage, and he uses a, a rate of perceived exertion scale. So, like, when you hit a top set of, say, your deadlift for whatever week, you know, if, if, it, if, if you write down it was a 7 when it was supposed to be a 9, then he knows he needs to, to tweak something, you know? So um, it's stuff like that where if you're going to do distance coaching, that's what I feel like you should be doing because how, how else are you going to gauge perceived effort from somebody? Because, like, you could, you could write a program, it's a cakewalk, for somebody right. and they're not going to make much progress um so it's just stuff like that where um although I, it's stuff like that where i feel like the nuances of training people in person that's where the value comes from you know but on the flip side what we what we as coaches that, that train people in person can learn from people who do distance coaching i guess would be the marketing stuff um you know people who who tend to rely more on distance coaching and online coaching are jedis when it comes to marketing and some do it not some do it douchier than others um but there but there are ways to be a non-douche about it for lack of a better term <laughs> uh but i but i feel like that you know getting people results and uh not making it about you but making it about your clients uh is is where the the good ones kind of again separate themselves from the from the masses as well yeah, I, that's definitely something that we know all too much about, you know, in terms of time commitment and yeah. actually measuring things. You know, we we also, with our uh, virtual coaching, we bill on a month-to-month basis. We don't have any yep. extended uh, packages for thing. that sem- yep. for that exact same reason. You know, we want to we want to provide that service monthly, and if you know we're not doing it, then we probably don't deserve to coach yeah. you. So, yeah, I don't I don't like to hold people to like, hey, you have to work with me for X number of months. You know, like. If it's a month, I mean, and I have to, I have to be realistic too. Like if they, if they like, Hey, I can only do a month, but I want you to increase my deadlift 200 pounds. I'd be like, ah, good luck. Right. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> good luck. Uh, uh, that's not going to happen. But, uh, I, and, but if they, sh- if they just like, Hey, my shoulder hurts, um, you know, can we work together for a month or two so you can make that feel better? And I, I can, I can look at their videos and try to give them, you know, smart programming then we'll do that. But I mean, I have some clients who've been with me for over a year, two years, three years, and others might only do three months, but it's just month by month. Same thing you guys do. Cause I, again, going back to what I said earlier, I just, again, I'd rather just yeah. earn their business month by month. For any consumers in the market. So people looking to get online coaching, what's your advice to them to look for, to what to look for in, in an actual good coach outside of just their own physical accomplishments? I think, uh, Honestly, I think I, I, if they have, like, I have this massive questionnaire that I send any potential clients to fill out. Like, they, I need to know, like, everything from days of the week they want to train, their ideal split, their equipment availability, any past injuries. I need you to send me, the, I, I need, like, I ask them, you need to send me this video, this video, this video, and this video. Um, it's a pretty thorough process. So I think if you if you contact somebody and they have like that kind of approach, you're probably going to be in pretty good hands because they're they're getting the the pertinent information that they need to write a program catered to you, to your goals, your unique injury history. If it's just some like bullshit like yeah yeah I got you and then it's just some like here's your program without any like screening, right. then you're probably going to get a pretty watered down product. Um, you know, that, I guess that would be the answer. Like I, no, that's I, a great answer. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I think if, if, if the coach isn't gathering initial information or background or history from the individual, and then they're not, uh, measuring things on a weekly basis, you know, you, you mentioned with your coach, you enter in an RPE weekly with a lot yeah. of our clients, we require them to enter load if they missed any reps, difficulty and uh, velocity uh, and yep. notes, you know, so it's, it's, uh, I, I think we're definitely in agreement in terms of, if your coach isn't gathering things from you, you can be assured that, you know, they're just vomiting into the, you know, Excel or Word document when they send it yeah. to you. And a lot of times I leave it up to the person how often they reach out to me. Like some people, I write their program. I don't hear from them until a month later when they need their next program. And that's, that's fine. But I say, like, no, like, send me your videos of your top sets. Like, give me, you know, if something feels weird, let me know. Um, like, certainly I want, I want to hear like what your point, you know, if you miss any reps, um, you know, some people are the, 
no, it's like every day. Like, hey, what, like every 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 set is detailed. I'm like, I don't need to know all that. Yeah. Like, I don't need to know how like your lateral raises, like how much weight you did on those. Like, I I, I prefer like your squat, like the big lifts. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, but it's certainly I I'm I'm on point with you guys. I think the more the more information that uh, um, a coach is trying to ascertain, uh, I think uh, the better off the individual is going to be. Yeah, that's that's those are great points. So uh, listening is a is an important topic. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a important skill. Yeah. So wait, now you have an article uh, that's like four ways to improve your deadlift by fifty pounds. So if I do all four, is that two hundred pounds? <laughs> yes. It is. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> and, and I gotta start in reading. Two weeks, like my window's two weeks. It is. Oh, yeah, easy. Done. Don't not even a month, just two weeks. No, two weeks. Okay, done. <laughs> It took you nine months to get my deadlift where I wanted it. Uh, <laughs> that's called job security, my friend. <laughs> if you need to sign if up. You got with it all Tony. at once. What what will I be here for? Chris needs to sign up with Tony. Yeah. I want. Wait, I want to know what article you're referring to, Rudy. Or was this a made up article that I wrote? I no, I thought I saw that on your site. I think no, it was on. Uh, it was on. Like, I, I, it was like a men's. Right. It was like men's health or something like that. Okay, so. all right. Maybe they get. Maybe it, maybe they gave your article a new title. Maybe they. they, they sometimes the editors do that. You they, know, they... we uh, we introduced Rudy as the mature athlete when he first got on, and you know, with the aging process, certain visual perceptions start to happen. <laughs> oh, <is that> right? <laughs> Mem- memory memory lapses. <laughs> But but at least I have calves. Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know where that myth... Well, okay, I do know where it came from, but let the internet know we don't have to revisit that, and it is, in fact, my calves are... Don't look down. Yeah, I, I'm, in, I'm in the same boat. My, my calves are pretty piss poor. <laughs> it's perpetuated. There you go. I, I, I recently tore the... Uh, my gastroctum peronis, and I'm in getting uh, imaging. And At least I have two calves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My peronis is bigger than your whole freaking calf. You do have giant calves. I don't so, understand how. So, if you ever see Chris walk, his there's no flexion in his ankle. I don't know how his calves work. It's this hip waddle side to side. Yeah. His calves are huge. It doesn't make sense. Have you always but have you always had big calves, Chris? Um, uh, they've. They've definitely been like always like around the same size of my arms. So there's a peak. They're on definitely that. way bigger now after all the squatting sure. and deadlifting. Like, so. The, but anyway, I'm I'm in getting uh, the the uh, the imaging done, and she's like talking through you know how much damage is in there, and and I'm like, just tell me, is the tendon intact? She's like, yeah, but you have all this muscle. Done. I'm like. I have plenty of muscle down there. I'm not worried about it. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. And she's like. Wow, you bodybuilders sure have a different viewpoint on things. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't go. <laughs> but it's just like, it's pretty, look, look at my legs. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Just let me know if the tendon's intact. <laughs> People mistake right. me for a bodybuilder often. <laughs> yes, we know. Brandon has no sarcasm detector, but, you know, yes, he is mistaken for a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frequently, actually. Like, oh, is that Jay Cutler walking down the road? Oh, no. my goodness. <laughs> speaking, speaking of bodybuilders, I was at I was out to brunch with my, my family this past weekend, and it always boggles my mind. Like, I'll order, I'll order a double omelet, right? So I'll be like, hey, I, I see you have an omelet here. I'd like to get two of those. Like, the way I was like, I, I like two of those, However, whether it's one big omelet or two orders. And he's like, well, is it bulking season? Like, <laughs> like he was, like, flabbergasted. But yet there's people – next to me ordering like stacks of like pancakes and french toast uh-huh. not not a not a blink in the eye like but a double omelet uh, it's just like a, amazing like oh my god you're bulking or? you get that a little bit with oh, your double so burgers i do it's probably like I it's order... probably half the number of calories that these people next really to i mean what's wrong with double <laughs> protein but the double stack of pancakes that doesn't even eggs, get a second six eggs it's, is it's like true blowing people it's i can't tell you the times that you know when i ask for extra meat on something not extra fries, not extra whatever, but yeah. you know, a little extra meat. Like, you know, that's a lot of meat. <laughs> well, I look like I have a problem eating meat. Like, yeah, yeah, thanks for yeah. the warning, but you have a set of eyes, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, uh, it, it, I always get a chuckle out of it. Like, I remember one time I ordered a double omelet. The chef 
sent sent out a shirt to like like to congratulate me for <laughs> you can eat two of these. Like, it's really not that much food. Like it, it really is not. Like, yep. It's like a three egg omelet, just two of them. It's like, I mean, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not a tiny individual. I'm not as big as you guys, but it's just like. It's it's not that much food. Like, no, but uh, I what, guess to the normal person, it it, it kind of is. I don't know. But but, but take away <laughs> the extra toast and two glasses of orange juice uh, or the soda, right? And it, yeah. the calorie content's the same. Yeah, yeah I exactly. mean, we can we can talk about that. I mean, that's an indictment. We talked about uh, commercial gyms. You know, they do have their place, and they get a lot of people off the couch and and at least training. It's it's frightening to see the number of Americans or the high percentage of Americans that don't do any sort of uh, uh, physical fitness and just keep loading up on the carbs and the sugar. Not, and it's just frightening when we look around America and see what, uh, what our population well, I think is. We're, I to. think we're number one now. I saw in the news this week that we are officially number one in the world is the fattest country in the, in the, in the world. I thought we were that for the last 10 years, but well, uh, I, did, I did too, actually, but apparently I, I guess Mexico is number two. So we must have Overtaken Mexico, yeah. yeah. Yes, <laughs> we're in the lead. We're in the lead. <laughs> At least we're number one. Yeah. Yeah, that's frightening. Uh, you know, when you were with Cressy, you guys uh, specialize in a lot of sports, obviously mm-hmm. sports performance, and uh, a special emphasis, I think, a lot on baseball. Uh, do you continue to work with uh, uh, sports and, and athletes uh, that are active in uh, either – college or, or professional sports yeah i got a i got a handful of college guys that that come see me here in boston um but i would i have to say that 90 to 95 percent of my clients now are general pop and uh i actually i actually kind of prefer it like i started off in the industry in a commercial gym training just regular people um i kind of like it you know i spent i spent and that's not to say i i didn't like training baseball player because i did um, but doing it for eight years, it was like, oh man, another baseball player. Um, so now that I'm training, because I, on my own, I, I just get a little bit more versatility with the amount of people coming in. But I still get, I still get a handful of of athletes uh, coming in to train me, especially now that summer's here. Some of the college kids are, are home now, so they're starting to trickle in a little bit. But I mean, I can't when like Cresty's. 20, 25 miles away. So everyone knows if they play baseball, they're going to go out there. So I'm not going to get too many. You know, the fact that you are, though, working with General Pop, I mean, it, it seems like that could be immensely rewarding in, in light of what we were just talking about as being number one fat country in the world. I mean, uh, I, of I really I like helping to... people, of, you know, understand and get better. I mean, it just, you know, serving a, a tremendous purpose. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, it, 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 the umbrella theme of, of, I mean, my tagline in my gym is because heavy things won't lift themselves. So, you know, people look at the sign, the taglines under the sign when they look at the gym. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy to see, like, what you're going to be doing when you look in there. There's, there's no frills. There's no, there's no cardio equipment. It's, uh, it's barbells, dumbbells, kettlebells, and, that's, and a bunch of people getting after it. Uh, and they're all, they're doing basic stuff. Like, honestly, I get a lot of people come in who want to come in and observe or hang out for a day or shadow. Uh, and it's, it's, I take it as a compliment, but they're, they're often like, Oh wow. Like they'll look at the programs like, Oh, I'm doing kind of the same stuff. This is good. It's affirmation that I'm doing the right things. And, you know, I think they look at it, they're expecting some kind of like fancy schmancy programming. Um, and that, that that's not what most people need. They just they need to do the basics, uh, but but cater to where they are. Like I need to meet them where they're at. Like so, so for the bulk of my clients, that might be a trap bar deadlift, that might be a goblet squat, that might be a front squat, like that might be the duffel bar. Like um, it's just it's just meeting where they're at as far as their mobility restrictions, like how stuff feels, injury history. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's just about getting people stronger and moving well. And that, and just a quick side note: if you haven't uh, if you haven't tried it yet, you need to do the duffalo bar for front squats. You will be amazed. I, okay, so. I I just did my heavy set yesterday, but I did not use the duffalo bar. Try, so next week, try I will. It. It'll I'll try it. It'll cue in the rack position. It'll cue those elbows into a great position, and the bar doesn't want to roll away. So yep. you end up with this really, really nice stacked torso position instead of like a little bit of that forward roll in the thoracic. Sometimes yeah. when you're chasing yep. the bar from rolling or um, it just takes out because the bar doesn't want to roll away. 
I mean, it's and the same structure that's in the back that the Duffalo Bar is built for is the same. Stru- it. Is the same structure in the front. So just give it a try. That's all I have to say. You, you. Will, I mean, I've done yeah. it with back squats, and it's like honestly, and I'm not. I'm not saying it. It, it, it was night and day. Like the it, it, the back squat felt amazing using a Duffalo Bar. Um, you know, I know your listeners. That's like preaching to the choir. But uh, um, no, I'm just yeah. But yeah I'm, I've, not, I've not tried it with the front squat, but I definitely will. Yeah, try it with the front squat. Our college, uh, our college coaches that because uh, a lot of them are big into front squatting, absolutely yeah. love that bar for the front squat. So, um, and and my myself, I can't even barely front squat because of my elbow flexion. I can't yep. touch the bar, so um, so I've got to do it zombie style and doing with that with a straight bar just sucks that's just flat out it sucks <laughs> zombie style that'd, zombie be a, style. that'd be a really you good know, hashtag arms, Ar- arms straight zombie. out right yep or, yep yeah so i call them frankenstein squats but whatever yeah that's uh, maybe that's too. what it is <laughs> uh, yeah that is that, that's a better uh frankenstein's a good one that's yeah. what it goes to. yeah <laughs> so anyway just a side note for you so i i figured I you'd have some s- star wars character that you would uh call that uh, maybe no i can't i can't think of one unless uh yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not geeky enough. I can't think of one off the top of my head. Wiki or walkie or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's. I, 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 Star I, I, Wars. Been, that. Yeah, I, stay I, away I, from the Star Wars that. references. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you know, we're going to be. Uh, we've talked about this. We're going to be in Boston in September yeah, with the yeah, Kabuki I'm Movement System. I think you're going to try to come over on Sunday because Saturday's oh. a tough day for you with all yeah, the training. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday's my my longest day and my busiest day. So. Uh, unfortunately, I won't make it on Saturday, but I'm definitely coming out because you guys are at TPS, right? Yes. Yep. yep. We're, we're so, looking well, forward I'm, I'm def- to uh, maybe stopping by Core and uh, checking it out. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know if I have enough weights for you guys, but uh, <laughs> you definitely get something established. Uh, but no, I'd be I'd be happy happy to have you guys. But I'm definitely stopping by on uh, on that Sunday for sure. Okay. And uh, we'll, put, we'll put you to we, we'll be, be putting you to work for sure. I'll work. I'll work. You, yeah. guys, you guys helped out with, with me and Dean when you were in Vancouver, so that was fun. I'm happy to, to jump in. That was yeah. fun. All right. Well, what do you think, guys? You got anything else you want to chat with the man about? Tony, you got anything you want to add? Uh, how to how do people uh, how do people reach out to you? What's uh, yeah, your social website, media? My website's the is home base. So any any articles, social media is is TonyGeneral.com. That would be the easiest way to follow me and get a hold of me. Um, yeah, now, and now the speaking season's in high gear. So this is the time of year I'm traveling a little bit more. So, you know, Dean and I will be in London, or Orlando. Uh, my wife and I are doing a, a workshop here in Boston in August. Um, so yeah, we're, it's, it's in high gear now. So website, and then you, if, if I go up, come into your neck, it was by all means, uh, I'd love to have you. So the pronunciation, Gentle Core, people might misspell that. So it's G-E-N-T-I-L-C-O-R-E. Correct. Yep. Got it. All right. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing you in Boston and uh, yeah. keep up the great work. And uh, thank you for sharing with us today. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you yep. so much, Been Tony. a really good time, Tony. Take care. Bye-bye. Right. We did it. All right. Good Thanks, job, guys. Tony. I'm sorry Thanks, again for uh, making you guys wait. Like, I felt like a dick when I popped on you guys. Were like, I'm like, oh, sorry. No, no, no. That's cool. That's <laughs> okay. We weren't there for We never burned time. We find things to talk about. <laughs> yeah. How, so how is the warehouse coming along? Well? Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, we got a lot of work to do. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting the new facility up to manufacturing equipment is going to be big for us uh, for the next awesome. couple of years. So, and it, we're just so excited to... We we end up securing the space exactly opposite the gym, so we're all in. It makes it so easy. That's yeah. awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's fortunate because we were like that close to uh, leasing space. You know, two or three miles or five miles. Actually, yeah. one one we looked at was like fifteen miles away. Yeah, that yeah. would have been a pain in the ass because you sign up yeah. for that. That's you're signing up for five years or longer. You know. Yeah, because I'm with my space. I I just signed for another year, so next year I'm probably gonna look on different commercial space here in Boston. We'll see. Um, it's not cheap in the no, city. No, it's got to be yeah. really expensive, yeah. Uh, um, so, But the idea is just to try to, you know, stay small, keep profits high, and not, not let my eyes get too big. But, yep. um, but uh, yeah, when you guys come in Boston, uh, I would love to have you stop by and say hi. And Sounds then good. Oh, we I'll for come sure out will. there to, to Medford where you guys will be. Excellent. 
And uh, I don't know what your schedule looks like on Friday, but we have uh, the first three hours is like what four to six or something, three, three to six, six or something like that. Oh, okay, yeah. On, on Friday, so I we might kinda, be able to do that. Yeah, that, that yeah. kind of lays the fundamentals for the whole weekend. We okay. we start with some base stuff. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a really good one to to. to I might be, to I see. should be able so, to do that for sure. Okay, so I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And I'll drive out Friday and then come back out again on Sunday. Yeah. All right. That's All right. great. Awesome. All right. Tony, All right, good, guys, to, good to see you again. again. I really appreciate yeah, it. And let me you. know when this goes live. I'll, I'll be sure to share it. Great. Will do. Absolutely. Thank All you, right, Tony. Take care. Bye-bye.